Hello everyone. Um, I hope everyone is having a uh, happy and safe Friday. It is uh, coming to you from Greenville, South Carolina here and it is uh, it's pretty nice and sunny out today. Um, so for those of you who are new, my name is Cheryl Bricky. Uh, I am the owner and designer of Metal Mist Designs and uh, this live is to kind of go with the Morewood Mystery um, I've been recording the lives uh, each Friday after the new set of instructions are published monthly on the first Thursday of each month. So welcome everyone. Uh, if you're still, uh, you just found us um, and you want to take part in the Morewood Mystery, the instructions are monthly and so there's plenty of time to catch up and so I hope you join along. Uh, otherwise, this month we just had, we had some more half square triangles to make. I broke those up so I didn't make you make them all in one month. Um, and we also had a thing I'm, I'm calling the flower units. It, it was basically uh, two of the smaller half square triangles with two, um, two other fabric pieces. And I was trying to figure out what to talk about in the video today because um, I was like, ah, you know, there's not too many tips and tricks um, about that. I've, I've already shared all of my tips about making half square triangles in a previous video. So if you just search for the word bricky, um, or I can try to link to it um, in the comments in this one uh, about how I make half square triangles on uh, extra pressing step uh, does, I find makes them a lot more accurate uh, for piecing and uh, piecing for the, uh, ugh, the seam to be on the diagonal. Sorry about that. Um, for the flower unit, um, in my patterns, personally, um, I like to press things open. I press all of my seams open that I can, except for really my half square triangles, because I do like to use the block lock ruler to trim those. Um, when, especially in a mystery quilt, when you don't know how the pieces all go together, I do try to give people instructions on how to, how to press. For the flower units, I say you can either press open or towards the dark you know, dark fabric or toward away from the half square triangles. That is your cue. Um, however you like to press, you go for it. Um, I can tell you that because I know what the pattern looks like. There's, there's nothing, there's not any seams that are going to have to nest or are going to wind up hitting each other that are going to be bulky. So pressing those however you like, but I would just try it one time, try pressing the seams open, uh, to see how it goes. I find personally it makes the blocks a uh, just makes them flatter uh, and easier um, to piece. Sometimes when I press to the side, I wind up kind of uh, moving the blocks and uh, kind of shoving the seams around. So I was thinking what to do today. And I actually have my sewing room is clean ish. The cleanest it's usually ever is. Um, I'm actually sitting on the floor and I can see the floor. Uh, so I thought instead of, um, I've already kind of covered the more wood. If you guys would like thumbs up, I'll give you a little tour of my little sewing room. So just as uh, kind of a preface, I do have my own, it's the smallest bedroom upstairs is my quote sewing studio sewing room. I'm lucky to have a dedicated sewing space that I can close the door on and keep the mess inside. Um, I did when I started quilting, I was in with the office with the computer and I can just tell you quilting with all the dust that it creates from the sewing and the cutting and a computer with the fan and all the electronics, that was not a good match. So um, just to note, if you have a computer in your sewing room, make sure you're checking it because our, our machine was all clogged with all sorts of of lint. So I took over what was then the guest room and moved the guest room kind of into the office. So we did a little uh, rearranging. This was about maybe about six years ago. Uh, and so I will just give you a little tour. I will try to move the camera um, around not too much to make you too, too dizzy. Um, where are we? Here we are spinning around. Okay, so whoo, sorry, I'm gonna move slower. This is the door where we come in. Um, out this door is a catwalk where I I put all of my quilt tops and quilts and things that need to be binding. They're all out there. And my two rolls of batting are also out there because uh, there's just not any room in, in here. 
and I can just open up. You can, woo, you don't want to see all that mess. But here are my rolls of batting woo, with some other stuff on them. And so when you come in the room, there's my cat. Um, you start off, here's my ironing board. That's an old um, armoire, my closet. This is the used to be actually a kitchen table. Um, and now it's my sewing table with my sewing machine, my cat, window. And then this is mostly where I store. Oh, another cat just came in. Ooh, let me close the door. Back up so you can see this. And then there's some more fabric. So I, um, I try to only keep fabric that fits right here in these two bookshelves and, and right there. Uh, when I start running out of room, that is when I do a de-stash. And just when I was cleaning today, I realized I think I just in general have too much. So um, I either need to stop buying fabric or do a big de-stash because uh, a lot of it's, I like it, but it's old and I, I'm just not using it. So the way I store fabric, these right here, these are really great. So if I need a blue, I can take the blue and I pop it on my sewing table. These were um, salad containers from Costco. So I got the spring mix salad. Uh, my family eats a lot of salad. And so instead of buying things, these work really well and they're really great. So I fold everything here is between um, mostly a fat quarter, quarter of a yard. Anything smaller than like an eighth of a yard, I consider a scrap. So it's not that I throw it away, I just kind of put it in the scrap pile. So I know if I'm picking one of these, it's usually at least about a quarter of a yard. So I have them organized by, um, by color. That's how I tend to work. So I have, and I had enough, you know, I have three bins of blue and two of uh, red and pink. And I think all of my yellows, browns, and purples are all in one. So you can see what, what I like to collect. Um, the next one's down. These are on, they're a comic strip board. I'll get out one. They're just, uh, I guess they're like a little, maybe they're not eight and a half by 11. Maybe they're like, um, eight by 10 or something. And I take all of my fabrics that are about half a yard upwards to almost about two yards. And I roll them on those. And you can see they're kind of, I will admit, I used to have more of these on the rolls. They're kind of a pain to use and then put back on the rolls. It's a lot easier for me to fold them and, and put them in the bins personally. So I've been moving more towards that. Um, but that's those. And then there are some of my solids down there. Here are all my books. And I have, I have actually purged a lot of books that I just wasn't using and I donated them to my local modern quilt guild so other people can, can use them. And over here we have pre-cuts, big old stack of layer cakes. And then these are all, and they're all, see, they're too full. Those are all my solids, once again, by color. And those are anywhere between a fat quarter and probably almost a yard. Then here are my scraps. I really like this system because I can just pull these out a little bit. And you can see, as I'm cutting, I can just literally just throw them in there. So I, if I don't put things away right away, they wind up on my floor, which is where things usually wind up. So this system does work for me. And when they get too high, um, that's when I have to de-stash because uh, the pinks were up here and I wound up making um, my bear hugs quilt out of all the pinks and reds. So wound up using up those. Next down here, here's my cat. This is Oreo. Uh, she's trying to figure out how to get up there. I don't know why. Um, these are my scraps for solids. So I have kind of the, um, the cools, the brights, and then the neutrals. There's some more solids that just didn't fit in the uh, other tubs. And down below, I have larger cuts. So these are anywhere between two and, and five yards. 
And then I have some rolls of fabric over here, which Oreo is demoing for me. When she was a kitten, she used to be able to climb that and get all the way up to the top, which was really annoying because then she'd just sit there and knock all of my thread off. So I, I think I've told you guys I was an Arfil artisan for five years. Um, before that, I basically exclusively used Arfil and I still basically exclusively use Arfil. I love it. Um, so these are most of my neutrals and then the blues to the reds. And then I have some more um, in there. And there are my cones over there, because those are wonderful. Um, there's a comment that it was very organized. <laughs> well, this is only because, this is the reason I'm doing this video, is because it normally does not look like that. Um, a number of years ago, I had an opportunity to get a whole bunch of Free Spirit fabrics on the bolt really, really, really cheap. So I have been working through them. This pile used to be as high as the bookcase, but now I have worked through it down a little bit. And that is my fabric. Over here, my sewing, my ironing. I just got this new ironing cover. It's one of the uh, the Ruby Star Society ones. You should have seen my other one. It was heinous. It was it was uh, very very. It was just gross. You know they just they just get gross. I picked out one that was really pretty that had tiny strawberries on it, but it was white with the little strawberries, and I decided that I was going to go with a dark color. Hopefully, this one will stay looking nicer longer. So for my iron, you can see that my uh, my room, because this is a bedroom, it is carpeted. Uh, so for safety, I have this old piece. It's just a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of uh, granite tile. Um, it was from our bathroom remodel. So I sit my ironing iron on that. And then my iron's nothing special. It's just a cheapy model from Target, but it does have the auto shut off, which for me, gives me peace of mind. I've never left it on, but I'm always afraid that I will. So over here, this is where it gets a little messy. Um, I will show you in here. This is kind of where I store, there is a little bit more fabric in here, unfortunately. Um, this is more like works in progress and other notions. Um, this is where my glue sticks go, my extra uh, sewing needles, some other pillows in progress. There's some thread, um, my spray base. This is kind of where it's a little dirty, but it's life. Um, that's why that closes. Down in this drawer, here, hold on one second. I'm just gonna move my, my lamp so I can open it up. This is where my buttons, my little note, like little rickrack and my, my zippers are. And so that's all in there. And then finally, this lower one, in addition to uh, an extra power cord, this is where all of my, uh, my interfacing, tissue paper, all sorts of flat things kind of live in there. And I will totally admit, there's always too much stuff in there. And as I close the drawer, it kind of falls behind the drawer. And then you have a cat in the drawer because this is, this is real life. So over here, I used to have my table, if you can imagine, facing along that wall. So it started at the corner and went over. It did give me more floor space, but I was only able to access the cutting from two sides. So with this forming more of kind of a peninsula, oh my gosh, look at where my cat's going. See, look, she's going, oh no, she's going back there. Hopefully she'll be able to get out. Um, but this way, oops, sorry, I can cut from the right, from the left, from the front, so I can really get around all of my fabric. So I find that I am cutting safer because I am able to cut, you know, properly away from myself more, and it just it's just easier to get around. You'll notice that this is um, this is Piper. She's the littlest cat. Um, this is a pillow that I always leave on my sewing table because one of the cats, when they're here, if I give them this, they stay on the pillow. If I don't they wind up laying on whatever I'm working on, which then doesn't work so well for trying to sew it. So that's their pillow. Down there is where I keep my white scraps. It's hard to see. Um, and then here's my sewing machine. This was a 10 year anniversary present from my husband. I joke and I tell people that he offered to buy me a new diamond ring. And I said, no, I want a sewing machine. 
And he said, well, I can't buy you a sewing machine. That's like buying a woman a vacuum cleaner. And I said, no, no, no. I want a sewing machine. I don't really want a vacuum cleaner. Though I will slowly tell you that I got a Dyson one year because I wanted it and I kind of do love getting the vacuum cleaner for my birthday. Um, so that's my Bernina 710. It's the, they don't make it anymore, but it was the cheapest, the lowest end model of the Bernina large throat. And I loved it so much that down under the table, I have my uh, travel thing, travel container. This has my second Bernina 710 in it. Um, I just got nervous, especially during the pandemic, that um, everyone was sewing and if your sewing machine broke, repairs were taking, you know, a really long time, two, three, four months because they were so backed up. So I wound up buying this one on eBay because uh, I loved my Bernina 710. So then I had two of them and lo and behold, literally like a couple weeks after I got it, I did one of my machines went out of timing. So I was like, ah, oh, this is why I have two now. So that is where I do most of my cutting and sewing and my quilting because I do all of my own quilting, quilting there. Um, and I do, the Bernita has some good light it has a lot of fluorescent lights, but um, I also have this little, it's kind of like the, like the Daylight Company light, um, but those are like a lot, a lot of money. This is a just a cheap knockoff. Um, it worked so well, I got a second one. They're really light, you can move them around. It just gives a little extra light when I'm sewing. And now, because once again, I'm brave, I will show you the closet. Oh, here, I'll move the batting. That's just my extra batting. Um, this is, ooh, just dropped that on the cat. This is where I keep all of my, my patterns, my other things like business cards. This is a real mess. I, yeah, I'm kind of embarrassed showing you all of this. I need to, I need to organize this also. Um, the closet actually does go all the way de back behind the walls, but we just have long-term storage there. And then I have a couple rolls of, um, that's wide back, wide back um, fabric, which I love because as we all know, I do not like piecing backs. So that, that's really kind of my sewing room. I don't think that there's anything else. I mean, I, I also need to go and put a few more things. These are all, basically everything on my wall was, were gifts from other people, um, making them, little mini minis from different people. Um, different things like that, but I do, I need to put a few more up. I need to figure out where I'm going to put them before I start baking all sorts of holes in the wall because I don't like filling holes and sanding. So that is what it is. So does anyone, if anyone, oh, Denise says I keep cutting in and out. Well, I apologize for that. Um, hopefully if you did, if it just missed something and you wanted to watch it again, um, you can watch it on the repeat. I will have this on, um, up and unless anyone has any questions, I just hope you enjoyed how I organized my space. And I will once again say one of the reasons I did do this, let me switch it back to me. Here we go. One of the main reasons that I decided to do this is because my sewing room actually was clean, which it never is. Um, the one of the things I am lacking that I really need to figure out is more in progress, in progress quilting um, storage. As soon as I start pulling fabric for a quilt or start piecing, I don't really have a good place to, to store that. So it winds up on the floor and then it gets, you know, trampled on and covered uh, and gets to be a real big mess. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything else you kind of want to see in these videos. And um, I hope you have a wonderful uh, November and I will see you again on the first, I guess the Friday after the first Thursday in December. I think that's like December 5th or so. Okay, thanks so much. Bye-bye.